normal classic car shop. This is DWS Classic. Whether it's buying them to flip them, building them to show them, or just driving the wheels off of them, we've got the best job in the world. Iconic vehicles from the past were meant to be driven. This is history driven. Once again, it's the car capital of the world out here in Southern California, and we're gonna bring you some of the most cool, different, unique set of rat rods you can find out there. You know, rat rods started out as something you could put together cheap, a bunch of leftover parts, you know, maybe at a cab, maybe at an old shell of a car. You know, you could throw a couple small parts at it, sling it together yourself, poorly constructed a lot of them, whatever, but they're all different. It doesn't take much to put them together, and that's how this whole hobby started. Now rat rods, they're progressing, just like every other type of car out there. You know, they start doing a little more elaborate things to them. Guys start putting more touches on them. They start putting some real money in them. They start making them safe. So that's what we've got for you today, is some of the latest rat rods out there and what's going on in the rat rod world. A rat rod really is just a car with leftover parts it can be junk. You might have yourself a grill off an old farm, you know, tractor or something like that. And, you know, you'll put that on your car. You can hodgepodge anything you want together. And rat rods really are just that. They're just a ratty old dog. You piece these things together with a bunch of leftovers and you come up with something pretty cool. Luckily again, I was able to call on a bunch of friends that got rat rods. These guys are some of the coolest stylists on the rat rod scene right now. They got stuff that's cutting edge as far as the rat rod world goes. And we're lucky enough to get them all together and bring these to you today. My name is Alan Cerna. It's a 35 Ford pickup, modified. Not saying that it won't burn rubber when you want it to, but it, it's, a, it's just like a, a regular street car, you know? A little rougher to ride, a little harder to see out of. You get a lot of looks from people. They're, they're slowing down on the freeway and you, they're taking your picture and they're high-fiving you and thumbs up. So it's been fun. It's a fun, it's a fun ride, that's for sure. Hi, my name is Matthew Rios. I have a uh, 1936 Ford truck, rat rod, driveway built. The wood in my bed, it's off my best friend's fence when we tore it down. Didn't want to waste it, so I put it on my truck. And that, that's just, uh, that's just, that's it. That's our lifestyle, you know? We get junk, make it pretty. Uh, my name is Michael John Hegman. Uh, Michael's oddly enough spelled E-A-L as opposed to the norm, which is A-E-L. I call it unique, but my mom just screwed up on birth certificate. <laughs> um, I, obviously, I put that over-the-top shifter in it because what's a rat rod without one? <laughs> Reynaldo Venegas with a V, E-N-E-G-A-S. It's got some windows. A lot, of, a lot of rat rods don't have windows, but I wanted a little bit more comfort. I'm getting older, if I'm gonna take these long rides, I wanna be able to ride with my chiquita in the car and enjoy it. And the people will say, hey, you know, Uber, Uber, you know? I said, yeah, if you're pretty enough, get in, you could get in the front. If you're just some ugly dude, get in the back. My name is Robert Wong, there's no right or wrong. You know, if you're restoring a 57 Bel Air, it has to be a certain way. These put Buffalo nickels on it in milkshake cups. Do whatever you want. Rat rods are just good. There's no rules. There's no guidelines you have to follow. Anything goes. Things like the front bumper, it's made out of camshafts and pistons and rods, um, to the doorknobs, which are uh, spider gears out of an eight inch Ford rear end. Just make it work. That's what you do with a rat rod. If, if it doesn't work, you, you make it work, you know? It's Mike Mattis. I think I've had more fun with this car than any of them, mainly because the other rat rods around and the group of guys, and the club especially, a real good group of guys, and so there's a lot of camaraderie and local stuff going on. My name is uh, Chris Metzger, 
Yeah, uh, more fun driving this than really anything. I've driven everything from Lamborghinis to uh, Porsches, all the other cool exotic stuff, and nothing stacks up to this, really. You can be flying down the freeway and people are taking pictures and, you know, doing this kind of thing around you on the highway and, uh, you know, they, they really, uh, it catches a lot of eyes, but it's also a lot of fun. History Driven is brought to you by Chevrolet Performance, fueling the passion of automotive enthusiasts by offering crate engines, transmissions, blocks, and components for project cars. Total Cost Involved Engineering Incorporated. Quality doesn't cost, it pays. We've got eight different rat rods here at my shop right now. And just looking at each of these, they're all so different, they're all so cool. These guys are welding gears and wrenches and all kinds of stuff to their cars. You know, use them as shifters, use them as door handles. You know, again, anything goes. I gotta say, cruising with these guys is a lot of fun. You know, I'm riding around in some of these little things. They sit right on the ground. There's no sound deadening. There's no insulation. You know, there's not much comfort. There's barely any suspension in a lot of these things. You know, and they're just beaters. But they're a hell of a lot of fun. They don't weigh nothing, and they all got V8s and stuff in them, so they're all pretty quick. With this unique group of eight that we're running around with, you know, these cars are just like their, their owner's personalities. They're all so very different. And when we were cruising around in the pack, you wouldn't believe all the attention you were getting. You know, people see these things, of course you hear them because they've all got open exhaust. And when the people turn around and see what's coming, man, it stops them in their tracks, they're eyeballing these things, they're loving it. Uh, it's a 1929 Ford two-door sedan. Uh, oddly enough, registered as a 30 for some reason, which drives me up the freaking wall. <laughs> but uh, full static suspension as opposed to everybody that's running uh, air ride. Not that I didn't mind air ride, but I kind of wanted something that puts a little bit of fear of God in me, um, which this does. Um, it's just got a 350 out on the front end, uh, kind of tearing itself apart, but a few little things I slapped on there. Uh, threw a spittoon on the top for, a, for, my, for my quote unquote cold air intake. Um, I just recently did my, my firewall for my gas tank, which is all bead rolled brass. I'm trying to take everything back to the whole brass Model T era. Working on door panels, threw a 32 dash in it. Um, I, obviously, I put that over the top shifter in it because what's a rat route without one? <laughs> I've been running, I've been, I've owned four cars since like the age of 19 minimum. It's kind of an issue. <laughs> Prior to this, I had a 53 lead sled, and it just kind of it was just progression. You know, I'm still missing a couple 60s cars I'm looking for. As far as speed goes, it really wasn't built for speed. It's just a small block, nothing special done to the motor. Uh, it's got glorified polished parts to make it seem faster, but really it's not. This car is not meant to go fast anyways. It's, like I said, it's a bit of a, a, a death trap and I like it that way. I have a uh, 1936 Ford truck, rat rod, driveway built. We picked it up off a guy up in Utah. It was uh, previously a burnout truck, so you know basically everything was broken. And then uh, my wife and I, we we put our pennies together, got a new motor, drive train, all kinds of stuff. But my wife builds uh, vintage trailers, so she's got a tow hitch and airbags in the back, and, and then uh, we take her everywhere. And she, you know, the motor mounts, I made the own motor mounts, my shock mounts, I made everything all by hand. So, uh, my frame gusset's a giant wrench that I got from my grandpa's garage, uh, so my frame doesn't flex. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, except for, you know, I don't build motors and stuff, but we, we did all the fabricating ourselves and 
Honestly, I can say I built this with my own hands. Got some cool features. Uh, usually what you gotta do in a rat rod is either it's a gift, like a little baby right here in my drive shaft, so it's baby on board. Uh, I got really awesome brass uh, air horns we got from uh, Julian, California. Apple pie country, it's really good. The wood in my bed, it's off my best friend's fence when we tore it down. Didn't want to waste it, so I put it on my truck. Uh, and that, that's just, uh, that's just, that's it. That's our lifestyle, you know. Get junk, make it pretty. You know, it goes to show, no matter what you want to try, with a little taste, you can pull off something very cool. History Driven is brought to you by POR15, professional automotive and industrial coatings for permanent rust and corrosion protection. You know, Huntington Beach is the mecca for the hot rod world. I would say for the rat rod world as well. You know, there's a lot of rat rods running around town. There's a lot of them that have been in some magazines and get a whole lot of attention. You know, our buddy bought one and brought it to us. I couldn't believe he drove this thing back from Kentucky. 1935 Ford. This one actually I bought from a builder out in Mount Sterling, Kentucky. I believe it was 2014. Coolest thing about this is, uh, well, one of the coolest things is that uh, my father and I actually flew out there, went and picked it up from the original builder and uh, drove it all the way home, 2,700 miles in six days. So that was a father-son trip that we did. And we did Route 66 as much as we could. Uh, Jack Daniels Distillery, we did Nashville, Tennessee, Bricktown, Bricktown Pennsylvania, uh, New Mexico. So uh, we had an absolute blast and got a little bit of trouble too on the way home, but we had fun. The faster you go in this one, the better it feels. Um, since I've got it, I've, I've redone the suspension on, on the back end, raised the car about an inch, um, put a different shock on, new leaf spring, and and uh, kind of changed, it's a buggy spring in the rear. I kind of changed the way the setup is as far as the spring's concerned. But um, it's actually surprising how comfortable it is once you, you get used to it. We were doing, you know, between 225 and 300 miles a day without an issue. It's pretty fast, yeah, now. Uh, the original motor in this was an old wore out motor out of a Chevy uh, Blazer or something. Uh, but Darren here at DWS, we got a crate motor, small block 295. Uh, it's a little built. Darren put that motor in for me here. Um, and uh, we got a Muncie four speed with a, uh, it's a Nova rear end out of a 68 Nova, 410 Posi. So it, it scoots when it wants to. Actually, before this whole thing was going on, I was just getting ready to tear a few things down again, and I'm, I'm working on the front suspension. I got a design to raise the front an inch and get a little bit more stroke out of the shock so I can get a little bit more suspension up front. Um, I'm changing up the headers a little bit and putting a, uh, some baffles in and some other stuff. And, uh, and then I want to do a little bit more work to the, uh, the seats and the interior. I need some bucket seats or something that kind of hold you in because if you break loose or you start sliding around in this thing, you end up on the other side and it gets a little sketchy. So. History Driven is brought to you by Eddie Motorsports, products for the specialty automotive industry that are high in quality and available for an affordable price.
It's a 1932 Ford pickup with a 392 Hemi. I've always loved rat rods and my dream car was a early 30s Ford truck with a Hemi. So I had uh, two other rat rods before this while I played around with the whole idea until I found the, the one that was the keeper. The 392 Hemi with eight carburetors and the stainless steel milkshake cups for the air intakes and uh, it's just a really rare and unique uh, motor. It's a driver, it's not a race car, but it's, it sounds better than it goes. It's, it's not a, you know, a high horsepower motor. We decorated it with about 300 buffalo nickels. You know, everyone asks why I put nickels all over it, and it's just, you know, when, when you have a bag of nickels and don't know what to do with it, the, it it'll go on your rat rod. And, and since the buffalo nickel was the year, you know, 1932, they made the buffalo nickel, you know, that was the, the year, so it just fits. Period correct. We did uh, put a Bentley emblem on the front of this, probably because a lot of the car is bent. Uh, we've got a uh, unique center console I just had some buddies put together that's made out of a Harley Sportster gas tank with a cup holder and a trick paint job. So that's my cup holder slash glove box. And uh, it says, hold my beer on the side. So that's, that's a fun feature. But one of the main things that turns a lot of people's heads is the rear suspension setup. It's all done on gears and chains, and it's chain driven to raise and lower the suspension. You know, everybody has hydraulics, airbags, different other stuff. but. We haven't seen a chain-driven manual suspension setup before. You can be finished to a certain degree, but you're always going to decorate it. There's always going to be something that you find that goes, I have a perfect spot for it. You know, and that will probably never end. It's got a 350 with power glide. Nothing fancy. If I break down, I could go to Pet Boys and get the part, slap it on. That's what I like. At that time, when I was growing up, they were, they were more like jalopies, you know, at that time. And so when I got old enough, and uh, I thought, I'm going to get one. So I started looking around, found one, and took it from there. I had lots of fun with it. And that's what Rat Rod's all about. It's whatever you want. You make it, a, you make it what you want, a art, a junk, or whatever it is. You put, put your mind into it, and you end up with what you wanted. Somebody else says, oh, you know, if I had, a, if I had it, I'd do this, I'd do that. I tell them, well, when you get yours, you could do it the way you want. I get more attention with this than my 67. So, and it's a different car culture. It's a whole different mindset of people. And uh, we kind of just we put these things together and make them street worthy. And it's a little, a little different than, than your classic 60s, 70s that you see all the time built up to $100,000. These are, these are a little more down to earth and uh, I think most people can do these if they wanted to. Just gotta have a little bit of imagination. But I've, I've had people come up to me at car shows and I do a lot of car shows. And, um, they'll ask me if they can take a picture. And I'll look at them and it's what, you know, artists don't want people taking pictures of their artwork. And I said, go ahead, it's not artwork, it's just fun, you know? It's for everybody to enjoy the car show. I do probably 40 or 50 car shows a year with this, and it's a lot of fun.